Dearest Gail, this has been the most terrifying Halloween we have ever experienced. Fortunately, despite the terror the men and I endured on this sugar-filled October night, I survived to tell the tale. Each year at the Jesuit Homosexual Compound, the entire facility opens itself to the public as a haunted house. This, of course, attracts many groups of young people, so it also doubles as a recruitment center for future staff at the Homosexual Compound. Outside the entrance, Bubba the Black Jesuit was dressed as a chocolate M&M and passing out candy to the children that arrived. A group of children approached Bubba, filled with frightful excitement and dressed from head to toe in their colorful assortment of costumes. Trick or treat! Their voices rang out with delight. Bubba grunted and sweatily ham-fisted a scoop of candy from his bowl, plopping pieces into each of the children's candy buckets. Before he realized it, Bubba's eyes took particular notice of one of the children in the group. It was a little, it was a little ginger boy with bright red freckles and sparkling blue eyes. His cherubic cheeks, scrawny figure, and porcelain white skin reminded Bubba of his late ginger boyfriend. The little boy smiled, his bright eyes twinkling onto Bubba's, which made Bubba's heart hurt. Bubba felt hot tears welling up in his eyes, and he choked back a sniffle. Having rightfully collected their loot, the children cheered like happy little monsters and ran off in the direction of the Jesuit homosexual compound, ready for a night they would never forget. Lick my butthole, Bubba softly waved to them, masking the tears in his voice. Bubba decided to take a break from passing out candy. The autumn night was quiet and refreshingly cool, so he gently clutched the candy bowl to his chest and slowly hobbled off to take a walk. Bubba was a large man, so standing outside for long periods of time was quite tiring, and he was already profusely sweating under the fabric of his M&M costume. Sad and a little hungry, Bubba dipped into the candy bowl for some chocolate. The slick metallic wrapping paper squeaked as it tore open, and the thick smell of sickly sweet milk chocolate filled his nostrils. Bubba took a generous bite of the chocolate and continued his nighttime stroll. In the silence, Bubba's mind began to wander to his late ginger boyfriend. This made his butthole very itchy. Bubba was so committed to his ginger that even after death did them part, he never again let another man lick his butthole. As a Jesuit, this interfered with his ability to work effectively at the homosexual compound, but Bubba didn't care. Not only did it affect his job, his health had begun to suffer. The Jesuit doctors diagnosed him with chronic dry anus and wrote him a prescription for chapstick to alleviate his condition. Bubba often had to use the chapstick several times a day and went through multiple sticks every week just to keep his butthole from bleeding. Oh, how he missed his ginger. Bubba continued down the lonely, dark road, itching his butthole with one hand and eating his chocolate in the other. He was lost in thought and so distracted by his itchy butthole that he hardly noticed the growing roll of thunder behind him. Without realizing it, Bubba had wandered down the road far away from the homosexual compound and soon found himself standing alone in the middle of an empty street like the lonely little M&M he was. The air was silent, except for the soft, ghostly fingers of autumn breeze grasping at his sweaty black frame. The sound of approaching thunder began to make him feel nervous, and Bubba checked the night sky. There was no lightning, nor even any clouds. That was when the wind began to sound less like the wind and more like the panting heave of hungry, of heavy, hungry breathing. Bubba turned around slowly. A massive mountain of a fat chick stood before him. It was Sarah Avery. Her stomach growled. Chocolate, she crooned like a retard. The sight of Bubba in his costume confirmed her suspicions. And she bellowed like a moose with rabies. M&M! 
Bubba screamed like a little girl, throwing the candy bowl behind his head and letting the can candy scatter above him like an explosion of confetti. He turned and hauled ass, wheezing and softly screaming with each breath. He ran faster than he's ever had in his entire life. The sight of such a huge M&M was so tantalizing to Sarah that she ran just as fast to catch him. Bubba couldn't last long. His obese black body was built for gay rape, not for running. Legs quaking, lungs burning, Bubba leapt to hide behind a tree, desperate to catch his breath. Sarah roared and stomped like a cow, throwing a giant fat girl tantrum upon losing sight of the chocolate M&M. Her ferocious moos then turned into mournful sobbing as she splat down to her hands and knees. Desperate and without dignity, she began searching all over the ground and in the bushes for the lost M&M. It was only a matter of time before her flaring bovine nostrils led her to Bubba again. Bubba reached down and felt his pocket, his fat hands clutching a square object inside. It was the engagement ring. Not since the day that Sarah Avery had eaten his ginger boyfriend had Bubba ever gone anywhere without it. In his deepest fantasies, he imagined that some day his ginger would reappear and Bubba would propose the he saw him. Didn't Jesus promise, Bubba thought. He had written Jesus a passionate, heartfelt letter in Christmas of 2017, praying for Jesus to bring back his beloved ginger boyfriend. Jesus had granted that Christmas wish, but it had been three years since and there was still no signs of his ginger returning. Why was God so cruel? It was becoming clear to Bubba that his dream would never really come true. This is why his front pocket always carried three things now, the ring, a chapstick, and a pill to make a pukaki suicide bomb. Bubba determined that if he ever faced Sarah Avery again, he would finally end this. Without his ginger, he didn't want to live anymore. He decided he would rather die avenging his murdered lover than to spend a lifetime waiting on a promise that God would never keep. Stealing himself, Bubba turned from behind the tree to face Sarah Avery, his eyes locked with her behemoth body, keeping her firmly in his sight as he pushed the pukaki pill into his mouth and filled his head with his favorite battle song in anticipation of his epic showdown, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Sarah, still stumbling on the ground, bared her teeth and drooled as she caught sight of Bubba, Bubba the chocolate M&M. Lick my butthole, Bubba taunted under his breath. He was ready for this bitch to bring it. With a retarded roar, Sarah threw herself with toddler-like grace toward Bubba. Bubba bared his teeth in return, turning up the volume on the Queen's song in his head, swinging his arms and yelling triumphantly as he flung himself like a black samurai toward Sarah Avery. Moments from collision, Bubba turned and pulled down his pants, leaping bare ass first into her mouth. Sarah opened her yellow jaws. Chocolate, she mooed. Her face in full, fat chick retard move. Lick my butthole, Bubba War cried. In a flash, everything went dark for Bubba. Silence, followed by the sound of wet sloshing. Wet sloshing. Bubba found himself in darkness sitting down with his arms wrapped around his knees. The floor he was sitting on was wet and gushy. When he opened his eyes, all he saw was fleshy pink walls and rows of gigantic teeth. Was this hell, he thought? Bubba stood up and began to explore the strange place he found himself in. It kind of looked like a giant mouth. As he wondered about this, he heard the sound of another voice. Help! the voice echoed. Is someone else here? Bubba's footsteps splashed across the pink, pink, wet floor as he made his way toward the vo voice. Lick my butthole, he called out. The voice gasped. Sweetheart? they suddenly asked. Bubba's eyes welled up with tears. The queen's song he'd had in his head during the epic battle had now become the soft, sweet melody of time after time, sung by Brent Spiner. L Lick my butthole, he blubbered like a hopeful child, wiping a tear from his eye. 
I, I will, the voice replied softly. There in the giant mouth, stuck behind a giant molar, was Bubba's ginger boyfriend. Lick my butthole, Bubba squealed, rushing to embrace his ginger boyfriend. The two lovers hugged tightly, pressing their foreheads together and grasping at each other's shoulders in desperate longing. Lick my butthole, Bubba cried. I know you thought I was dead, the ginger replied. I've been stuck in Sarah's mouth this whole time. Lick them. Lick my butthole, Bubba asked with concern. It hasn't been so bad. I stayed alive by eating from the food she stuffs into her mouth. My leg is stuck, but I've been able to pass the time doing push-ups and exercising. Lick my butthole, Bubba exclaimed, feeling up the ginger's new body. No longer the skinny twink he remembered, his ginger had become a strapping masculine, masculine gay, practically like a lumberjack. Bubba flushed, blushed with fresh infatuation. Bubba then reached in with his heroic black strength and wrenched the ginger free of Sarah Avery's molar and into his arms. The lovers embraced again. Lick my butthole, Bubba began to explain, telling the ginger everything. Lick my butthole, lick my butthole. What do you mean, the ginger asked. I haven't been gone for three years. It's only 2018. Lick my butthole, Bubba insisted. The ginger gave this some thought. You know what? That makes sense. Due to Sarah's massive gravitational field, time moves slower in here. Bubba then, slip, Bubba then slipped on some saliva, causing him to stumble. Be careful, the ginger said, grasping Bubba's shoulder to prevent him from falling. You don't want to go down there. Deep, deep down Sarah's throat was an endless black abyss. The gob of saliva that Bubba slipped on was kicked down Sarah's gullet and began to disappear, quickly at first, then very slowly, almost coming to a stop. Time really did move more slow, slowly inside Sarah and in, fact moved, and in fact moved slower and slower the deeper one went inside her. Lick my butthole, Bubba mur murmured incredulously. That was when Bubba's bowels quaked. A cold realization and sickness washed over his face and his heart sank. The pukaki! Bubba had taken the pukaki pill right before leaping into Sarah's mouth. The pukaki was angrily brewing inside Bubba's intestines, building like a storm. An explosion was imminent, and the clock was now rapidly ticking down. As soon as the bomb went off, the both of them would die. What, what is it? The ginger asked with concern. Bubba frantically patted his pockets, grasping his ginger's wrists and quickly getting down on one knee. Lick my, lick my, Bubba started desperate to propose before they both died. What's wrong, Bubba? The ginger pressed, the ginger pressed on. Bubba pulled at his ginger in anguish, still fumbling for the ring. Lick my, but it was too late. Boom! Back at Church of Gale. The men and I were scrambling to put on our gear. The sirens on board the ship were wailing. These sirens meant there was an emergency happening down on Earth and we had to act fast. Luckily, we had just recruited your first ever $25 tier patron as a man on our response team. Well, Anne, I said to him, I know you haven't had much training yet, but experience can be the best teacher. Just do as I say and you should do fine. We all piled together into a space pod and flew as fast as we could to San Francisco. By the time our team arrived in the city, we had already discovered the subject of the distress call. The enormous fat chick, Sarah Avery, was stomping all over town, throwing up vomit and diarrhea on everything she passed. Her massive fat feet smashed up cars, her rolls slapped chunks out of buildings, and her distressed fat girl farts turned everyone behind her into retards. We had to save the city and recapture Sarah Avery before she made her way to Florida. Our space pod landed on the ground and transformed into a black limousine. Vladimir rolled down the passenger side window as I handed the tranquilizer gun to Anne, who was riding shotgun with us. Anne, these are elephant tranquilizers, I explained. It might take 50 or 60 of these to take her down, so just keep firing. I hope you're a good shot. N nodded. Will do, Brent. I've played first-person shooters my whole life. I know I can do this. 
That's the spirit, I declared, patting him on the shoulder. Vladimir pulled down his sunglasses, switched the limousine into gear, and slammed on the gas. We were soon in hot pursuit of this disgusting fat chick. We followed the screams. Sarah Avery had stomped her way to a wiener schnitzel. Normally, she would be ripping off the top of the restaurant and raiding it for its hot dogs, but she was too sick. Burping, gurgling, drooling, Sarah lurched and threw up vomit and diarrhea all over the outdoor dining area. The innocent diners, though coughing and sputtering from the onslaught, simply thought it was just chilly, so wiped their faces off and continued to casually eat it off of their hot dogs and fries. Now, Anne, I shouted, fire the tranquilizers! Anne loaded up the tranquilizer gun onto his shoulder and lined up the sight then fired with expert precision. Boom! 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 The tranquilizers made contact with one of Sarah's massive gluteus maximus muscles, causing her to lurch her head back and moo. Great job, Ann, I hollered. All of the men on the marriage list cheered and pumped their fists. I knew all those video games would come in handy someday, he shouted. Sarah groaned and wailed, My butt! and began stomping away. Vladimir yanked the limousine back into gear and sped off after her. Vla Vladimir darted expertly through San Francisco traffic, swerving in and, out of, in and out of both lanes as he dodged cars and fleeing pedestrians. Sarah waddled and flailed. Her fat arms splayed out behind her as she ran. She waddled her way toward a large courtyard with a water fountain, presumably for a drink to alleviate her symptoms. All along the fountain, pairs of exquisitely dressed Indian couples cuddled in each other's arms, caressing each other and making out by the sparkling water. Before Sarah could drink, her body heaved. With a sick hurl, she vomited pukaki all over the courtyard, filling the fountain and its romantic bystanders with the putrid liquid. Sarah heaved and panted, and Anne took the opportunity to fire off five more shots of elephant tranquilizer into her fat hide. Sarah crooned in anguish and sobbed, flailing herself from the fountain and taking off running again. The Indian couples gazed over their contaminated surroundings with a mixture of shock and awe. Is it me, an Indian woman asked, or does it smell like heaven around here? It smells like India, another Indian woman replied her eyes rolling, rolling back with nostalgic delight. Her male suitor smelled the pukaki all over his date and instantly got an erection. Aroused and enchanted, he licked his lips and dove in for a kiss, slipping his lady some tongue. The limousine roared as we sped down the street, following the earthquake that trembled, trembled behind Sarah's fat footsteps. Sarah continued to heave and vomit as she ran, she vomited all over the buildings, all over the cars, all over the children who were out trick-or-treating. It wasn't long before she vomited right over the street, covering the stoplights in thick, viscous pukaki and slicking the road. Vladimir slammed on the brakes, and the limousine began to hydroplane. The men and I all grabbed our penises and held on as the limousine swerved and screeched, crashing into a group of cars in front of us. When it was over, the engine smoked, and the limousine was no longer able to start. Luckily, none of us were hurt. All right, I said, we have no choice but to continue this on foot. The men and I exited the car. Sarah Avery wasn't very far. She had stopped past the stoplight and was hurling pukaki all over a sex shop on the side of the road. Now was the time. Anne loaded up the tranquilizer gun and took aim. Wait, I, wait, I stopped him. Wait, Anne, oh no! Sarah's bowels gurgled, and her buttocks began to part. Man, put on your gas mask. She's about to blow. We all scrambled to put on our masks. Anne was struggling with his. He fumbled to put the tranquilizer gun under one arm, multitasking while trying to figure out how to don his gas mask. I wished I could have helped him. But the first rule when it came to fat chick farts is to put, your own gas ma put on your own gas mask before attempting to help others with theirs. Within moments, the explosion came. An epic fart ripped through the San Francisco sky. And I cried, watching him fall to the ground and grasp his throat. 
I got down on the ground with N and quickly put his gas mask on over his face. face. Breathe, N, breathe! And desperately sucked in air through the gas mask, his chest shaking. He had already inhaled a significant amount of fat chick fart. I knew he was in trouble and would have already suffered serious mental retardation. Unfortunately, there was nothing I could do for him until we got back to my office on Church of Gale. Anne, what are you doing? Anne was fumbling with the tranquilizer gun once more. Years of first-person shooter games meant that no amount of mental retardation would affect his aim. He was not about to let a fat chick do this to us and get away with it. Like a hero, N lined up the tranquilizer gun again and fired a blitzkrieg of shots into Sarah Avery. A deep, bellowing howl, howl echoed throughout the city, and Sarah Avery's gelatinous body collapsed to the ground like a dead elephant, sending out a massive earthquake that shook all of San Francisco. Minutes passed as the shock waves subsided and the only sounds left were the wails of coming police sirens and the blaring of car alarms. Sarah Avery was passed out in a pool of her own pukaki vomit. We gathered ourselves and jogged closer to the scene. Matthew pulled out his cell phone and called for backup at Church of Gale. Church of Gale, this is Matthew. We've got her down. Send a whale tarp. As my eyes gazed over the gruesome image of a fat chick passed out in a pool of pukaki, my mouth fell open. Hey, wait! I shouted incredulously. Matthew, call a space ambulance! I started rushing toward what I saw. Two men were passed out in the pool of pukaki along with Sarah Avery. It appeared to be a ginger built like a lumberjack, and beside him was a fat, hairy black man. They both seemed familiar. I isn't that Bubba the Black Jesuit, N asked, his voice a little slower and deeper now that he was partially retarded. That is Bubba, I affirmed, but who is that beside him? His ginger boyfriend, the lumberjack answered, soaked with pukaki, the handsome gay sputtered and coughed as he pulled himself to his feet. The men and I all looked on with awe. We couldn't believe it. Bubba's ginger boyfriend was alive. Bubba, I said, jog, jogging closer and kneeling down beside him in the pukaki. Bubba! I checked for a pulse, but there was nothing there. Bubba, I moaned, tears filling my eyes. Bubba, the ginger whispered, Dr. Spiner, is my Bubba all right? No, ginger boyfriend, I'm afraid he's, he's dead. No! The ginger wailed, throwing himself onto his lover's body as he began to sob. Bubba! Bubba, wake up, sweetie! Bubba! Bubba, no! N crooned retardedly, stomping over at a mad pace to save the day. N got down over Bubba and frantically began to perform CPR. It's no use, N, I said, placing my hand on his shoulder. He's gone. N was not to be deterred. He put his mouth onto Bubba's poo-covered lips and began to blow. This was followed by frantic, retarded compressions onto Bubba's chest. The ginger tilted toward Gerard and collapsed into his manly chest, sobbing. Right, right before the explosion happened, the ginger sobbed. He, he had something to tell me. He was so desperate to say it. I don't know what it was. Gerard comforted the ginger, patting his back. Aye, laddie. He say, tried to tell you something? It's more like he was trying to ask me something. The ginger anguished through his tears. I, I guess I'll go the rest of my life never knowing what it was, what he wanted to say to me so badly. Tears streamed down my face. My heart broke for Bubba's poor ginger boyfriend. I could only imagine his pain. A few feet behind me, Hugh Jackman began punching the ground in grief and frustration. I wonder if, the ginger said, I wonder if it was, lick my butthole. A fat, pudgy black arm shot up from the ground, and in its palm, in its palm was an open box with an engagement ring. Bubba, the men and I all shouted, and collapsed with exhaustion fo following his successful CPR session, retarded and covered in pukaki. 
The ginger flung himself to Bubba like an excited child. His watery eyes met Bubba's, filled to the brim with love. He glanced down to the rainbow diamond ring and then back into Bubba's eyes. He put his hand over the ring with warm acceptance. I will, he whispered, covered in poo and vomit. The lovers shared the most passionate gay kiss ever seen in all of San Francisco. The men and I all cheered, thanking Jesus. Hooray, we yelled, jumping up and down, hugging and kissing each other. Good work, man, I congratulated everyone. We got the exhausted Bubba back onto his feet. A truck with a whale tarp arrived on scene to collect Sarah Avery, and a space ambulance brought Bubba and his boy boyfriend safely back to Church of Gale. Once our work was finished, the men and I returned as well. Everyone is safe and well, and this story has a happy ending. Your patron, N, has suffered moderate mental retardation, but with a little socialization and a temporary video game detox, I think we can treat him. I am happy to announce that Bubba the Black Jesuit no longer has a dry butthole and is soon to be happily married. And so, Halloween night was saved, and we all lived happily ever after. Your husband, Brent Spiner. I would like to say a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Not only do you help me fight for true love and keep up the battle against the evil Jesuit order, but you guys are my friends and I really like hanging out with you. It's been a lot of fun. Like I said, we had a lot of fun on the movie night. So just thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Gail, Gail, Gail. Gail, 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 Gail.